This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, um, could you hear me? Are you able to hear me? You have to unmute me. No, you have to unmute me. Yes. Okay, could you hear me now? Yes, yeah, we can. Hear you. Okay. <clears throat> okay, good evening everyone. So, uh, one thing we both have in common is that it's either before or after our bedtimes over here. Um, good morning or good evening. Uh, seeing so many familiar faces, so I miss uh, our very good Chaverim. I want to uh, begin by thanking the Rimon Advisory for uh, uh, giving me the honor and the privilege to share with you some Devei Torah this evening for you and uh, to share with you uh, what, I, what I would like to consider a Pesach, an opening to be able to appreciate this new Sefer. Uh, I want to start by uh, thanking Rabbi Gary Shapiro of the Remom Advisory. Uh, I remember when I came, Gary uh, picked me up and took care of me and Rabbi Evan Widmont. Um, for also taking care of us in uh, Melbourne. And then, of course, to Lior, who really spearheaded um, this whole program. Thank you all. Um, it's really been an honor to interact with you and to, and to get to know you. And Be'ezus Hashem, look forward to many opportunities to uh, share Torah with you for many ha happy and healthy years to come. So this year is sponsored by the Rimon Advisory, and there could be no better... <coughs> uh, organization or enterprise to sponsor a shear and to establish a shear about the great Tanner of Mayer than the Rimon Advisory and that's how I would like to begin um, this evening. Now it's very interesting. It is Yadu'o Meforsim. It is very well known. It's an established, almost an established fact that the great Tanner of Mayer, whenever we encounter a Tana in Mishnayis, Rameir Oimer, that this Rav Meir is who we call Rav Meir Balhanes. He is the individual who the Svarim teach us is until this very day a wellspring of salvation and miracles for Klal Yisrael. Whenever Klal Yisrael is in a jam, so to speak, we could tap into the great merit of Rav Meir. Rav Meir is called Rav Meir Balhanes. In fact, 
We're going to start with Perek Dalet of the Sefer on page Chav Gimel. Reb Meir Balhanes is responsible to be oisen neflois gedoylois, to be able to be the impetus of great, great miracles. And what exactly is Rav Meir Zuchus that he is able to be the source and be Poyol Yeshua, so to speak, for Klal Yisrael? The Sefer M.S. Liakov, or Rav Yaakov Shalti al Ninyoy, writes something amazing. Rav Meir Zuchus was that he was Melamed Zuchus on Klal Yisrael. He always spoke favorably on Klal Yisrael. And, and therefore, because he always spoke favorably on Klal Yisrael, there is an interesting concept called HaMelamed Sanegaria al Yisrael HaKadosh Baruch Hu Meroimimai. Anyone who defends the Jewish people, anyone who speaks favorably about Klal Yisrael, HaKadosh Baruch Hu elevates them. In fact, if you ever heard like a clip or a recording of the Kloisenberg Rebbe's Chusayag and Olenu, where he, during his private Shemayna Esrei, or even during his laning of Megillas Esther, he would spontaneously break out in crying and tears, trying to defend, trying to come up with some kind of merit for the Jewish people. And I just want to begin by sharing with you. The Benish Chai writes in two places, and, I, and I, when I saw this I was utterly astounded, that the most important Mitzvah, the greatest zechus that a Jew could achieve is to be melamed zechus on Klal Yisrael. And it was a shocker to me. The Ben Eshchai writes in Parshas Kisisa on the Sefer Aderas Eliyahu that being melamed zechus on Klal Yisrael is a bigger zechus. He says it's adif mitalmed Torah, even greater than learning Torah. We know how important learning Torah is. Learning Torah is the center stone, is, is the cornerstone of Judaism. The Salma Torah connected kulam. What could be a greater mitzvah than learning Torah? Nevertheless, the Ben Eshchai says greater than learning Torah is being melamed zechus on Klal Yisrael. Ad Kedei Kach, to the extent where the Ben Eshchai writes in the Sefer, Ben Eshchayel, that when Chazal say, B'makoim she'balei tshuva oimdim, ein sadikim gemurim yecholim lamayd, that literally in a place where the repentance stand, in a place where a Baal tshuva stands, the, the endearment, the love that God has to a Baal tshuva is even greater than the makoim, that a complete tzaddik stands. And we usually understand that to mean that a Baal Tshuva, in a way, is more dear to HaKadosh Baruch Hu than a tzaddik Gomer. But the Ben Eshchai interprets it as follows. There are two kinds of tzaddikim. There's the tzaddik who's the perfect tzaddik, and in his merit, the Rebbe Hashem protects Klal Yisrael. We'll call him the tzaddik Gomer. And then there's what we call the Baal Teshuva. Literally, it means the master of response. That whenever God has a taina on the Jewish people, so to speak. Whenever the Rebbe Hashem is upset, whenever there's a kitrug, an accusation against the Jewish people, these Baalei Teshuva answer God. They say, Rebbe Hashem, it's not their fault. They don't know better. They're not feeling well. They never learned. They didn't have the proper Rabbeim. Baalei Teshuva, they give answers to God as to why the Jewish people are failing. A Baal Teshuva, someone who defends the Jewish people with Teshuvais, is greater even than the Tzaddik Gomor. So, that being said, says the Sefer Emes Liakov, Rabbi Meir, who was always Malamed Chosan Klal Yisrael, he was elevated to the highest heights, where we call him Baal Hanes. He was able to effectuate miracles for the Jewish people more than anybody else in history. And what we would like to try to uncover this evening is where in the entire Torah, and the entire Shas, do we find any semblance of hint that a mayor advocated for the Jewish people. Where did he ever defend us? Where did he ever try to be Malamed Sanei Gori on Yisrael? To the extent that he is considered the Baal Hanisim. But back to the Rimon Advisory. We're going to explain what does the Rimon Advisory have to do with Reb Meir. And that is as follows. Why was Reb Meir the one who was always Malamed Zchus on Yisrael? Where did he get it from? What was the source of his power? So there's a great revelation of the Yalkut Ruveni that's brought on page Chavhei. If you don't have the Sefer in front of you, you listen to the recording after. We're going to cover a lot of ground in the Sefer. You go to page Chavhei. The Yalkut Ruveni brings on Parshas Bereshis, page 115, that what was the Shoresh of the Neshama of Reb Meir? What was Reb Meir's Shoresh HaNeshama? What was the root of his soul? The Yalkut Ruveni 
says Rav Meir was rooted in the great Malach Matachrain. He His Shoresh HaNeshama was the great Malach Matachrain. Who is Matachrain? If you, if you look in the Gemara in Chagiga, the Gemara says, Acher, Rav Meir's Rebbe, why did he go off? What led him to go astray? We know ultimately Acher was what is called Kotzatz, Kitzitz Benetiois. He sort of threw everything away. So when Acher, through Kabbalah, elevated his soul to be Metayel Bepardes, to tour the mystical orchards of heaven, it says when he went up, he saw the Malach Matachrain. And what was Matachrain doing? He was writing, writing the merits of the Jewish people. So Matachrain is considered the angel who always advocates and defends the Jewish people. Ad Kedekach, that the Yalka Ruveni writes, that Matachrain, when we, remember when we say in Davening, Malach Echad Minei Elef, there's one angel that we have, that's Malamed Zchus and Klal Yisrael. Well, let's identify the angel. Who's the angel? Who's always Malamid's Chus and Klal Yisrael? The Yalka Ruveni says that's Matachrain. And says the Yalka Ruveni, Rabbi Meir was, so to speak, a nitzutz, a spark of the neshama of the Malach Matachron. And since Ma- Matachron is the great Malamid's Chus and Klal Yisrael, and he is actually the scribe that writes all the mitzvahs and Masim Tovim of Klal Yisrael, and Rabbi Meir was a spark of him, therefore he had it within his personality and his, his essence to be the great Malamid Zuchus on Klal Yisrael. In fact, the Yalka Ruveni says something incredible. We know, we're going to come to very soon, the Gemara in Erevin Yud Gimel Beis. The Gemara says that despite the fact that Rameir was so great and his prowess and learning was, was so eminent, we never paskin like Rameir. We don't paskin like him. Why don't we paskin like Rameir? Because we don't know what the man is talking about. He's too deep for us. We cannot plumb the depth of his reasoning. Rameir is so deep. How deep was Rameir? So the Gemara says he was able to darshan 49 ways to be metahera sharetz, 49 ways to be metameya sharetz. Rameir could look at any sugya, present 49 arguments one way, 49 arguments another way. What is the source of this ability, this capacity, to be able to to, um, uncover 49 point of views one way, 49 the other, says the Alka Ruveni, this is rooted in the word Matachron. Matachron is Memtes, Memtes, 49, 49, and that in fact is why we don't pass like Rameir. But coming back to the Rimon advisory, says the Yalka Ruveni, if you look in the Gemara and Chagiga and Dav Tezvav Beis, this is on page Chavvav in your Sefer, Rabba Barshila found Eliyahu, and Rabbi Barshila asks Eliyahu, Nu, Eliyahu, what's the Rebbe Shalom doing right now? Eliyahu says, what's the Rebbe Shalom doing right now? He's learning, he's saying over the Torah of Rabbi Akiva, and Rav Tarfain, and Rav Gamliel, and Rabbi Yeshua. And Eliyahu said, and what about Rameir? No, Eliyahu says, Chas Vashon, the Rebbe Shalom is not saying one thing Rameir said. Rabbi Barshila said, why not? What's wrong with Rameir? He's, so Eliyahu said, because Rameir learned from Acher. So Rabbi Barshila says, what's wrong if he learned from Acher? You know what his learning from Acher is comp- uh, compared to? Rimain Matzah Toichoi Ochal Klipasai Zarak. He found the Rimain. He found the pomegranate. And he took out the inside and he threw away the shell. Reb Meir's learning from Acher is like learning from the Rimain. What does that mean to learn from the Rimain? You take out the inside and you throw away the shell. Comes the Yalkut Ruveni and he reveals something amazing. Says the Yalkut Ruveni, take the word Matachrain. If you take out the shell, you know what the shell of Matachron is? Tess, Tess. What are you left with? Remine. Remine is the good of the Malach Matachrain. And therefore Elio said, you're right, if he's learning from the Remine, then we, I have to go to the Rebbe Shalom, and I'm going to tell the Rebbe Shalom from now on, we're going to say over the Torah of Reb Meir. So that's by way of introduction, what the Rimon advisory has to do with the great Tana Reb Meir. Reb Meir's methodology of learning from Acher was, Rimon, Rimon Matzai, Toichai Achal, Klipasai Zarak, Rimon are the center letters of Matachon. Okay, so Mar Rabbi we begin today's shir. 
And uh, it hit me yesterday that if I just speak out what I told you to look at, then uh, you're going to say, okay, I knew that already. I already read, read that in the Sefer. So the Rebbe Shalom gave me a new idea, Mamish, 24 hours ago. Lekavad the Chashva Oilam. Shkoyach, I see Rabbi Holzer over here. Shalom Aleichem, how are you? Um, Re- oh, Rabbi Blackman. Shalom Aleichem. It's Mamish, I feel at home. Uh, right before I left, I had a, a Chashva a walk. Rabbi Blackman took me in the Pardes, and uh, we were touring. We were, Baruch Hashem, we were Yatsa B'Shalayim. But uh, thank you very much to all the Chasheva Rabbanim and the Chasheva hosts. And uh, I see Reb Saul Creighton, that's just on my screen. And um, Rabbi Goldschmidt over here. Shalom Aleichem, everyone. I'm already getting homesick. Okay, back to the Shir. There's a very interesting Gemara on Daf Yurches uh, in Masech Avoy Zara about the power of the Tanah Rameir. The Gemara tells us that Reb Chanina ben Tradyoin, who is the father-in-law of Rameir, was uh, sort of imprisoned because he was learning Torah Barabim. And because of that, his daughter, the, uh, the, the daughter of Rabbi Hanina ben Tradyoin, was the sister-in-law of the great Tana Rameir. And we know Rameir was married to Bruria. And the sister of Bruria was taken to a base Zoynos, to a brothel. And Bruria tells her husband one morning, uh, Mayor, do me a favor, go rescue uh, my sister. Rameir says, you know, one place is not good for a rabbi to be hanging out is uh, the Makkah where your sister is. This is, this is not going to be a, a good thing. And uh, Bruria said, let's go. The, the, you can't worry about your reputation. I need you to rescue my sister. So the Gemara says uh, uh, Rameir went in there and to make a long story short, he goes to the warden of the jail and he says, I need you to rescue my sister-in-law. Here's the cash. And if anybody gives you a problem, I want you to say the tefillah, Elaka, the mayor, Aneni, the God of Mayor, will answer me. And sure enough, they sent dogs against the warden, and he said, Elaka, the mayor, Aneni, and the rest was history. The tefillah was very effective. So the question is as follows. The Marsha asks, the famous Marsha, that this tefillah, Elaka, the mayor, Aneni, seems to be an inappropriate expression. Because to say Elaka, the mayor, as if God has designated his name on the Tanra Meir, seems to fly in the face of the rule that God does not associate his name with tzaddikim while they're alive. We just had in uh, these parashiyos, God would not say, like, hey, Avraham, like, hey, Yaakov, only like, hey, Yitzchak, because Yitzchak is blind, and assumes chash of kames. But God does not associate his name with the, right, with the righteous even while they're alive, because you never know, a person is not secure until their last day. So therefore, how do we understand the tefillah el the mayor Anini, how could Rameir associate, have God associate his name with him, Bechayav? And the Marsha basically answers that the Tefillah El Akad Mayor Anini has nothing to do with the Tana Rameir per se, but what Rameir meant to say was El Akad, the God, the mayor Lanu, who illuminated our lives in the times of Hanukkah, Anini, he should answer us. So, so to speak, the mantra of Rameir was El Akad Mayor Anini, not, be, not that Mayor refers to him personally, but the God that illuminated our lives in the times of Hanukkah, He should illuminate our lives now. Save us from this tsara. help us out of this jam, help me find my lost keys, my lost socks. So Rameir would always invoke, the Marsha says, the power of Hanukkah, the light of Hanukkah. And what we'd like to investigate is, what was Rameir's particular connection with Hanukkah, why was he always invoking Hanukkah? Whenever you're in a jam, God, you helped us in times of Hanukkah, help us now. God, you helped us in... Uh, wh- wh- why is Hanukkah always being referred to, always being invoked? Okay, now we come to my favorite part of the Sefer, Perak Yud Gimel, that's page Tzadi Bez. A Gemara in Rosh Hashanah, Daf Lamed Aleph. The Gemara says as follows. The Shechina from the time of the Chorban, we made ten exiles, ten golosim, says the Gemara Rosh Hashanah, and Keneged, the ten exiles of the Shechina, the Sanhedrin, likewise made ten golosim. What are they? The Sanhedrin went from the Lishkas HaGozos, to the Chanos, to a certain store, to Yerushalayim, to Yavne, to Usha, back to Yavne, back to Usha, to Sharafram, to Beisha'arim, and then last stop, 
the last stop of the Sanhedrin, the last stop of the Shechina, is none other than Tiveria. Says Rav Yoichanan, Tiveria is the lowest point of the Golos, the lowest point of the Sanhedrin, the lowest point of the Shechina. Amar Rav Yoichanan, umisham asidin li gael. If you want to know where will Mashiach reveal himself, will, where will the Messiah uh, make the big announcement? I'm here, it's time to come home, Mashiach is here. In which city will Mashiach reveal himself? In Sydney, in Melbourne, I know you guys have been finding it out for many years, but the Gemara says neither. It's not, it's not even Brooklyn, it's not even Williamsburg. Mashiach will reveal himself in the city of Tiveria. And we has, have to ask ourselves, this is the question of the Sefer Emes Liyakov, Rabbi Yaakov Shaltiel Nino, one of the early Mikubalim, what is so important about the city of Tiveria that Rabbi Yochanan says Mashiach will reveal himself in Tiveria? In fact, the Chida asks that if you look in the Zayar, the Zayar says, not Tiveria, in the Galil, in the Galil, in, in the north of Israel. So the Chida says it's not a contradiction at all. The Galil is the general region. But if you want to know specifically in which city will Mashiach reveal himself, we, um, Talmud Bavli teaches us that Mashiach will reveal himself in the city of Tiveria. Haloi Davarhu, what is so important about the city of Tiveria? Certainly Yerushalayim is holier than Tiveria. Tiveria is one of the four holy cities, but it doesn't compare to Jerusalem. Why the city of Tiveria? Furthermore, the Emes Yaakov cites the Yalkut Shemaini. The Yalkut Shemaini says the following very interesting expression. The Yalkut Shemaini says, To Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Tiveria Mishalemes Lemashiach. Tiveria will complete the Messianic process. Tiveria will be Mashlem Mashiach. What exactly does this mean? Tiveria will be Mashlem Mashiach. Another interesting question. This is based on a question that Emes Yaakov asks. Emes Yaakov is busy trying to understand why Rabbi Akiva is buried in the city of Tiveria. So I would just like to add, once, once we're analyzing why various Tanoim are buried, buried in different locations, let's try to understand why, in fact, is Rav Meir buried in the city of Tiveria. Why did he have to bury the, uh, be buried there? Now, I don't know if I would have asked this question on my own. I don't know if I would have woke up in the morning and started darshaning why different Tanam are, are buried in different places. But once the Emes Yaakov is discussing the significance of Rabbi Akiva being buried in the city of Tiveria, let's ask the same about the great Tana Rav Meir. Furthermore, if you, let's go back in uh, your Sefer to the Hakdama on page Zion. There is an amazing statement um, brought by the Benish Chaim Masechta Rosh Hashanah, he quotes Reb Chaim Vital, namely, that an, an amazing phenomenon about the great Tanner of Meir is that Reb Meir, in contradistinction to any other Chacham who ever lived, was buried standing up. That Reb Chaim Vital teaches that the great Tana Rav Meir was amazingly buried standing up. Why? Why is that? Why was the great Tana Rav Meir Buried, standing up. Furthermore, another question. Question number five. There's a Yushalmi, quoted by the Emes Yaakov. The Yushalmi says that at the end of the life of Ramea, Ramea was ill. Where was he ill? Ba'asya, in Asia. Ramea went on a trip to Asia. And he was ill. He was, so to speak, on his deathbed. And he sent word to Eretz Yisrael, ha Meshicha chayn did chayn. I am Mashiach. This is a Yushalmi. You probably forgot the Yushalmi and Klayim, so I'm here to remind you. The Yushalmi and Klayim says, Reb Meir had an announcement to make. Reb Meir says, I am Mashiach. And the question is, Rabbi Isai, if there's anything Reb Meir wasn't, he might have been the Tanakama, but he wasn't Mashiach. You know how we know he's not Mashiach? Because he doesn't come from Malchus Beis David. You know who he comes from? Rameir comes from Esav. In fact, Rabbi Isai, you know the famous drush, all the Svarim bring down, that in coming up Parsha, Parsha Vayishlach, Yaakov Avinu is about to encounter Esav. And the Pesach says, Vayira Yaakov Ma'od Vayetzelah. Yaakov Avinu was very afraid and he was frightened. So Rashi wants to know, what was he scared of? What was he frightened? Vayira, says Rashi, Shema Yehareg. He was afraid lest he get killed by Esav. Vayetzerla, he was distressed. 
Shema Yaharoig Achirim, lest he kill others. Yaakov Avinu was afraid that he might kill others. Who were the others that he was afraid he might kill? He was afraid he might kill Esav. So the Mepharshim asked, the Mizrahi asked, so why doesn't Rashi just say he was afraid he was going to kill Esav? What's the significance of Shema Yaharoig Achirim? Actually, we have a whole chapter on this in the Sefer. And Bekitzer Nimras, the Svarim teach us that if you look in the end of Masech Tahirios, there was a whole episode with Rav Meir and Rav Nassim. They were giving Rav Shimon Gamliel a hard time. So Rav Shimon Gamliel threw them out of the base Medrash. And from here on, Rav Shimon Gamliel said, nobody stands up for them. And if anybody wants to say Torah over in the name of Rav Meir, we're going to call them Acherim. In other words, Rav Meir from here on is called Acherim. Now, Rabbi Yisai, who did Rav Meir come from? You look in the Masech and the, the Gemara about the Chorban Meis HaMikdash. The Gemara says right before they sent Vespasian and Titus, they sent Nero Kezar. And Nero Kezar is about to come and attack Yerushalayim, and he sends an arrow to the east, and it lands to Yerushalayim, he sends an arrow to the west, it lands to Yerushalayim, he sends an arrow to the north, an arrow to the south, it lands to Yerushalayim. He asks the kid, what's going to be? Please teach me a pasuk. So the kid says, basically, Nero, you're in big trouble. God's going to carry out His will through you, and then He's going to wipe His hands with you, He's going to destroy you. So the Gemara says, Nero Kezar said, What? I'm going to be punished for this. Arak, he fled. Azal, he left. The Agayer, he converted. Venafak, Mine, Rameir. Rameir came from Nero Kezar. So if Rameir came from Nero Kezar, Rameir came from Esav. Ah, oh, says the Zichrain Shmuel, and says the Pninim Yikarim, and says the Chavatzel Sasharon, and says every Sefer under the sun, this is the, the soid of the words of Rashi, that Yaakov Avinu was afraid, Shema, Yaharoig, Acherim, he didn't care about Esav, but Yaakov Avinu realized how important Reb Meir is to Klal Yisrael, and he was afraid, Shema, Yaharoig, Acherim. He was afraid if he kills Esav, he's going to end up killing Reb Meir, there'll never be a Reb Meir. So, Reb Meir came from Esav. He did not come from David HaMelech. What in the world does Reb Meir mean? I am Mashiach. What does it mean? Your Mashiach is coming. It's Mamish Sheker V'chazav. And finally, the Emes Yaakov cites a very interesting Medrash. The Medrash says, L'asad Lavai, God is going to come to redeem the Jewish people. And the Malachi Hashares are going to begin to be Makatreg, the Jewish people. Halalu Oivde Avoidazar, Halalu Oivde Avoidazar. The Jewish people serve idols just like the Gentiles. So God's going to say, at least they don't murder. And the Malachim say, it's not true. The Jews are Shoif Chedamim, just like the Umay Sa'ilam. So God's going to say, at least they're not Megala Arayus. And the Malachim are going to say, no, Halalu Megala Arayus, Halalu Megala Arayus. God's going to turn to the Malach Michael. He's going to say, Michael, defend them. And Michael's going to say, ba, ba, ya, ba, ba. And mi, Nishtatik. The Yalkut says, Michael will have nothing to say. Until the Rebbein Shalom will say, what do you mean? Klal Yisrael, give tzedakah. That Ad Khan Divrei Yalkut Shemaini. Asks the, ya, ask the Emes Yaakov, Michael doesn't know that Klal Yisrael gives tzedakah? What, what, what did Michael know? Michael seemed to know everything else. Why didn't he know the Jewish people give tzedakah? And furthermore, the Goyim also give tzedakah. So if God says the Jewish people give tzedakah, why can't Michael, why can't the Malachi Asher say back, the halalu oisim tzedakah? Why is tzedakah the big merit that will bail us out in the end of days? Marvra Abba we come to the centerpiece of tonight's shir, and that is the Gemara and Kedushin, Daf Lamed Vav. The Gemara brings the Brisa. The Gemara brings the famous Brisa. What are the Jewish people to Klal Yisrael? What is our, uh, to the Rebbein Shalom? What is our relationship with the Rebbein Shalom? And the Gemara says, Rabbi Huda says, it depends if we misbehave, if we act up. God says, I don't know who they are. They're my servants. I'm not related to them. But when we act like God's children, then we're God's children. And the Gemara says that this is not the opinion of Rameir. Rameir's opinion is, we go back to Parak Aleph in the Sefer, if you want to see the Gemara inside. The Gemara tells us, Rameir holds, Benkach 
ubein kach nekraim banim. That regardless what we do, regardless how we behave, regardless how we act, it doesn't matter what our behavior is, we are always considered the children of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and Reb Meir marshals four psukim to support his viewpoint. First Reb Meir says, Shenemar banim scholem heima, we're foolish children. And then Reb Meir marshals a pasuk, banim loy eimon bam, even though we don't believe in God, we're still his children. And then Reb Meir marshals a pasuk, banim mashchisim, even though we're corrupt, we're destructive, we're still his children. And then finally, Rameir marshals the Pasuk, B'nai Kelchai, we are the beloved children of HaKadosh Baruch. And the Gemara wants to know, why did Rameir have to cite so many Pesukim? And the Gemara says, because you might say, only when we act foolish are we the children of Hashem, but not when we are corrupt, so not when we don't believe in Hashem, not when we serve Avodah Zarah. So the Gemara cites the Pasuk, Banim Sechalem, foolish children. But maybe not when we are absolutely corrupt. No, even when you're corrupt, banim ashchisim. So you say, okay, maybe we're always the children of Hashem, but maybe we're called shlechte kindalach. Maybe we're called bad children. No, Rameir says, even when you don't believe in God and you worship idols and you're absolutely corrupt, you're called zisa tayra kindalach. You're called beloved children of Hashem, bene kelchai. Marvara boisai. Who do we paskin like in this Machlechus? So we already mentioned in the beginning of this year that we don't paskin like Rav Meir because lo yardu chaverim l'soif daitoy, chachamim l'soif daitoy. The rabbis had no idea what he's talking about. He's too deep for us. Nevertheless, the Rajba writes in his Chuvais in Kuf Tzadi Dalit and Reish Mem Beis, that even though we don't paskin like Rav Meir, this is the one exception to the rule. When it comes to what we are considered to the Rebbein Shalom, we do paskin like Rav Meir, and we are always considered the children of Hashem. Why do we paskin like Rav Meir in this Machlokes and nowhere else? Says the Rajba, Kroi Kadaiki Kivasayu. Because the Psukim are mashma like Shitas Rameir, that no matter what, Banim Scholim, Banim Loy Eimon Bam, Banim Mashchisim, Bnei Kelchai, even though we never paskin like Rameir, but Rameir is advocated by the Psukim of the Torah. I'm going to share with you very quickly five reasons that are brought in the Rishonim and Achreinim why this Machlekes we paskin like Rameir. So the Rajva says, because the Psukim defend him. The Emes Liyakov writes that since the Gemara brings a Brisa, that is Shakal Vitari in Shitas Rameir, it tries to understand and dissect Rameir's opinion, it does not comment on Rabbi Huda, that indicates that we paskin like Rav Meir. The Rambam's father, Rabino Maimon, writes that we paskin like Rav Meir. So, Rabbi Huda Leib Maimon wrote comments on the, the writings of the Rambam's father. He says another reason why we paskin like Rav Meir in this Machlokes, and that is because typically Rav Meir is the Tanakama. He's the first Tana. But in this Brisa, first Rabbi Huda is quoted, and then Rav Meir, indicating Rav Meir has the final word, and we paskin like Rav Meir. Marv Rabbi here's a fourth reason why we pass like Rameir. This is Mamish Oyem Venoira. Comes the Emes Yaakov and is quoted by the Ben Yehoyada. And he says, why don't we usually pass like Rameir? Because we have no idea what he's talking about. We, cannot, we could not plumb the depth of the logic of Rameir. We cannot be oimed on the logic of Rameir. It's too deep for us. It's too profound for us. But says the Emes Yaakov, you know when it's an issue that we can't understand the Shita of Rameir? That's when it's something relevant to us. But if it's something with, which is relevant to the realm of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if it's not, if it's Noigeya HaKadosh Baruch Hu, then one thing is for sure. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Yoyred L'Soyv Daite De Rameir. The HaKadosh Baruch Hu fully appreciates and understands the depth of the reasoning of Rameir. And since whether we are the children of Hashem, is noigea to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. This is relevant to the domain and realm of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu certainly understands the depth of the Shita of Rameir. Therefore, when it comes to what our relationship is with Hashem, we paskin like Rameir. In fact, the Satmar Rebbe and the Divrei Yoyal has an incredible interpretation. We say in the Rosh Hashanah Davening, Hayoim Haras Oilam. Today is the birthday of the world. 
Hayom Yamid Bamishbad Kol Yitzre Oilam. Im Kibanim Im Kavadim. If we're like children, or if we're like Avadim. Im Kibanim Rachamenu Karachimav Avadim. If we're like children, have mercy on us like children. The Im Kavadim, and if we're like Avadim, Inenu Lachatlu Yais. Then our eyes hinge on you. Achet Chanenu, Fasoitzi Karmish Vatenu Oyam Kadash, until you have mercy on us. Ask the Samar Rebbe, what do you mean, Im Kibanim Im Kavadim? Which one? Don't we paskin like Rabbi Huda? Don't we always paskin like Rabbi Huda? And if we don't, then we paskin like Rabbi Meir. What exactly is the suffix over here? And im kibanim, if we're like children, have mercy on us. And if we're like avodim, then we're dependent on you. And if we're banim, we're not dependent on you. Why are we only dependent on God if we're avodim? So he says very pashat. Well, there's a famous machloikis, Rabbi Huda and Rabbi Meir. Are we God's servants or are we like His children? Now, if we act like Hashem's children, even Rabbi Yehuda is maskim, then we're His children. So we say like this, God Almighty, im kibanim, if we act like children, then rachamenu karachim avabanim, you have to have mercy on us as if we'd be your children. Ve'im ka'avadim, but if we're naughty boys, and Rabbi Yehuda would say, we're not banim, we're avadim, and you're going to say, we banish we paskin like Rabbi Yehuda, we say to you, no we don't, this is not only relevant to us, this is relevant to you, like the Yannis Yaakov writes. So our eyes hinge on you to paskin, that in this instance, we don't paskin like Rabbi Huda. Because even though we're acting like avodim, but since this is a machloikis that's relevant to you, and and finally, here is a fifth reason why we paskin like Reb Meir in this Machlekes. And that is a wondrous comment of Reb Avadi Yosef in his parish on Perkei Avais, Anaf Eitz Now Lior told me 45 minutes, so at 6.15, or at 9.15, uh, 10.15 your time, the shear is over, but I'm going to be immediately starting again. So if you want it to end, it's over, I have no tinnitus. Every, I know it's a long day, you could go to sleep. So the shear is over in five minutes and it will immediately continue for a little bit longer. Um, but I'm uh, anybody who has to go. I know, I know how it feels. Okay, but the fifth reason is, Rabbi Yisai, Rabbi Vadya Yosef cites the Gemara in Baba Basra. The Gemara tells us in Baba Basra there was a man by the name of Tornus Rufus and he tells Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva, you know, how do you guys give tzedakah? You Jews, you're always giving tzedakah. Wherever you turn, there's another appeal. Tzedakah, tzedakah, tzedakah. I don't understand. You believe in God. God decreed that this poor man should not have any food, should not have any money. If you're going to give him tzedakah, so you're contravening the gezerah of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Mashal ma'adavar doyme. What is this analogous to? A king who makes a decree about uh, his servant that he should be an ani, he should be poor, nobody should support him, nobody should supply him. If somebody sneaks into the prison cell and gives food to the Ani, he's a Moir B'malchus off with his head. And you guys are the Avodim of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Says Rabbi Akiva, Tornus Rufus, you're a Lamdin, but bad Mashal. I'll give you another analogy. There was a king who told, he got angry at his son, and he said, nobody feed my son, and he imprisoned his son. And someone sneaks into the prison cell and feeds the son, what will be the repercussions of the person who snuck into the prison cell to feed his son? Says Rabbi Akiva, the king will award him handsomely. Clearly, says Rabbi Vadya, Rabbi Akiva is paskening that we are always banim la makoim, even when we're in oisin rutsayin shal makoim. So clearly Rabbi Akiva is paskening like Rav Meir, says Rabbi Vadya. So even though there's a rule that when there's a machloikis from Meir and Rabbi Yehuda, that Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda, but here Rabbi Akiva agrees to Rabbi Meir. And halacha ke Rabbi Akiva mechaveirav. The halacha is like Rabbi Akiva against Rabbi Yehuda. And certainly in this instance, it's Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Meir against Rabbi Yehuda. So it's yachid verabim halacha karabim. Says Rabbi Vadya, you know why the Rajba Paskins like Rabbi Meir in this Machlaikis? Because Rabbi Akiva, Savar Kavase, Rabbi Akiva holds like him. By the way, could it be, could it be, if you look in Perkei Avais, who is the Baal Hamemra? Chavivin Yisrael Shenikru Banim Lamakaim. 
You know who the Bala Memra is? Rabbi Akiva. But amazingly, if you look in our voice, the Rabbi Nassan, Paraklamites, Brisa Aleph, you know who the Baal HaMemra of Chaviv and Yisrael, Shanik Rubar Mlamakam is? Rev Meir. Ask the Binyan Yehoshua, it's a stira. Who said we're always the children of Hashem? Is it Rabbi Akiva like in Pirkei Avais? Is it, is it Rav Meir like in Avais Rav Nason? Says the Binyan, Rabbi Yeshua, Binyan Yeshua, Rav Meir learned the idea from his Rebbe, Rabbi Akiva. So after Rabbi Akiva taught it, Rav Meir mastered it. So in Avais it's Rabbi Akiva, in Avais Rav Nason it's Rav Meir. So for you uh, Remez lovers out there, Listen to this one. The Arizal writes, Where is there a remez to Rabbi Akiva in the Torah? Vateshev be'eson kashtai v'yafoizu zroye yodav mide avir Yaakov. Avir Yaakov, the Arizal says, is oisio, it's Rabbi Akiva. But the very next words are Misham roye even Yisrael. Misham roye even Yisrael. Chassam Soifer writes, Rashi Tevois, Meir. Amazing how these two Ramazim come together. The same Remez in the Torah to Rabbi Akiva, Avir Yaakov, the very next words are the Remez to Rabbi Meir, Midei uh, Misham Raya Even Yisrael. So Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Meir are, so to speak, the tandem who paskins for all time that we are always Banam Lamakim. Now, here's an interesting idea. According to Rabbi Huda, if we don't do the will of God, which mitzvah are we not allowed to do? The Parsha Zrochim writes that from the Gemara and Baba Basra we just quoted, it would come out that Rabbi Yehuda holds, Bizman Shein Oisin Ritzoyner Shamakam, when we are not doing the will of God, you cannot give tzedakah. Because a Jew then would be an Eved, and you cannot feed an Eved if the Melech says the Eved should not have food. How are we allowed to give tzedakah, says the Parshish Drachim? We're only allowed to give tzedakah because we paskin like Rav Meir, that bein kach u bein kach nekra and banim. That regardless what we do, regardless how we act, doesn't matter respect of how we behave, we are always the children of Hashem, and even when we're ein oisin ritzana shamakim, we could still give tzedakah to another Jew, because a Jew is your brother, is a child of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It doesn't matter what they do. They keep Shabbos, they don't keep Shabbos. They could be not b'chlal amisecha, but they're still banim lamakim. Says the MS Yaakov, in the end of days, God is going to come and redeem the Jewish people. The Yibam Shem will say, 2,000 years is enough. I want to bring the Jewish people back to Israel. I want to redeem them. And the Malachim say, not so fast. They're murderers. They're Oivdei Avodah Zorah. They're Megala Arayos. So God's going to turn to Michal. And, Michal's, and God's going to say, no, defend them. And Michal knows the one mitzvah he cannot invoke is tzedakah. Because who says we're the children of Hashem? Who says? Reb but we always pass them like Rabbi Huda. Rameya Rabbi Huda, halachik Rabbi Huda. So the Malach Michal is mamish silenced. Now, maybe you'll say, but what do you mean? We brought so many reasons that we pass them like Rameya. Says the Emes Yaakov, there's a halachic principle called Kimli. Meaning, if you want money that's in my pocket, and I'm a muhsuk on the money, then I don't care if you say that we paskin that I should give you the money. I'm holding the money and I could say, Kim Lee, I paskin like the shita, I don't owe you the money. There's a halacha in monetary law that if you're holding on to something, if you're a muhsuk, you have a right to say, I paskin like the opinion that the money belongs to me. Ha moitzi mechaber of araya. So you know what the goyim are going to say to God? God, we are muhsuk on Klal Yisro and the Golas. We're muhsuk on the Jewish people in Melbourne. We're muhsuk on the Jewish people in Sydney. We're muhsuk on the Jewish people in Flatbush, in Borough Park, in Williamsburg, in Muncie. And God, you want to redeem the Jewish people? What merit do they have? Tzedakah? Tzedakah is not a merit. Tzedakah is a sin. God says it's a sin? Yeah. We hold, like Rabbi Huda, that the Jewish people are the slaves, the servants of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And if you're the servants of Hashem, tzedakah is not only not a zechus, it's an avera. It's a merida b'malchus. Chesed le'umim chatas. 
So God says, what are we going to do? Where am I going to bring Mashiach? In Williamsburg, I'm going to bring Mashiach. In Williamsburg, uh, the Goyim are going to say, Kim Lee like Rabbi Huda. I'm going to bring Mashiach in Melbourne. There are good, nice people there in Melbourne. There's a lot of Torah. In Sydney, you have great Rabbonim. But what are you going to do? The Goyim are going to say, We hold like Rabbi Huda. Kim Lee like Rabbi Huda. So the Yibar Shalom is going to say, Not so fast. There's only one city in the world that I could bring Mashiach. Because in that city, there's a law in Halacha that we always paskin like the Mara da Asra. The Knesset Hagdola brings a, a, a principle in Psak. The Halacha follows the rabbi of the town. Who is the rabbi in Tiveria? The rabbi in Tiveria, the Mara da Asra of Tiveria, is Reb Meir. And Reb Meir holds Benkach or Benkach Nekrambanim. And therefore, even though in every other city in the world it would be impossible for the Yibam Shem to bring Geula, says the Emes Yaakov, the reason why Mashiach will be revealed in Tiveria is because the Mara, the Asra of Tiveria is Rabbi Akiva who holds Benkach, U Benkach, Nekroim, Banim, and the Yibam Shem could invoke the Zuchus of Tzedakah. But I think the deeper meaning is that at the end of the day, when the Yibam Shem is going to have to yank us out of the Golos, it's not going to be so pasha that we deserve it, that we earn it. It's going to be kimet seischa me'aretz mitzrayim arenu neflois. God's going to have to pull us out of Golos. We're going to be eroim ve'eria. We're going to be memteshare toma. And the zechus that we have and is we're the kinder lach of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So when the Umay Sa'olam say, that people, those people, God's going to say, what do you mean those people? They're my zisa taira kinder lach. But we don't paskin, we're always the children of Hashem, do we? In the city of Tiveria, where Reb Meir is the Mar the Asra of Tiveria, we always paskin, we are the children of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And if you're going to have any doubts about that, the Rebbe Shalom says, I've orchestrated that Rabbi Akiva is also buried in Tiveria. So these two great luminaries for all time will stand up, and in that Makkah will establish Benkach u Benkach Nekraim Banim. Says the Emes Yaakov, cited by the Ben Yehoyada. That's what Rameir meant that I'm Mashiach. He didn't mean he personally is Mashiach. He doesn't come from David Amech. He meant his worldview is what is the foundation of the coming of Mashiach. Namely, we are always the beloved children of Hashem. That's what the Emes Yaakov says it means. Tiveria is Mishalemes the Mashiach. That's what Rameir meant. I am Mashiach. And this is the deeper meaning of why Mashiach will have to be revealed in the Galil, but not only the Galil, but in the holy city of Tiveria. And the merit of Tzedakah will be invoked in the Zuchus of the Holy Tana, Reb Meir. This is the reason why Reb Meir is buried standing up. Says the Ben Yehoyada, because it is his merit that stands up for Klal Yisrael until the great day that the Yibam Shalom will redeem and be Goyal, the Jewish people. Reb Meir, so to speak, is buried standing the allegorical meaning of that is the merit of Reb Meir literally is oimed for Klal Yisrael until the, in the end of time. Because in the last days, it is his suchos that is oimed for Klal Yisrael. By the way, that's why when we give tzedakah, the Emes Yaakov says, why are we always giving tzedakah? Because nishmas Reb Meir. What's Reb Meir got to do with tzedakah? It's only because of shitas Reb Meir that we're entitled and allowed to give tzedakah. Because according to Reb Yehuda, this is not a mitzvah that you could be doing. You can only give tzedakah b'zchus the shita of Rameir ben kach ben kach nikram banim. Now, Reb Chaim Falaji writes an astounding comment. It's brought in the Hakdama. I don't know how I, uh, Hashem gave this to me. I just stumbled across it. Reb Chaim Falaji writes in the Moed L'Chol Chai that a Jew is obligated never to be Mesiach Das from the Tana Rameir Balanes. And I was very taken by this expression, very taken by this language. Why do we always have to think about Rameir? I mean, is it, does it say anywhere we always have to think about Ram Gamliel, Rav Tarfain, uh, Rabbi Yeshua? There's a mitzvah always to think about Rameir, but perhaps the deeper meaning is to think about 
the world view of Rav Meir, the Tano Rav Meir, is what brings down to the world, what establishes the concept that we, no matter what, are bonim lamokim. That is why Yaakov Avinu was so afraid. Shema Yaroi Gacherim. Yaakov understood the vital necessity of Rav Meir. By the way, this is incredible. In light of the fact that Yaakov was encountering Esav, Rabbi Chanan Vasaman writes, Yaakov's encounter with Esav is a representation and the Masa'av is similar to of the Ikvasa de Mashiach, the period of time right before the coming of Mashiach. And in that context, Yaakov Avinu was afraid. Shema Yaro Gachirim. Yaakov understood that in the Ikvasa de Mashiach, in the period of time right before Mashiach comes, if there's one individual he has to preserve and he has to safe keep and he has to guard and he has to be so careful that he doesn't infringe on it, he doesn't damage and he doesn't cause to go lost, it's the Yaakov. It's Rav Meir because be ikvasa the Mashiach as Yaakov as Klal Yisrael is returning to Eretz Yisrael. We must ensure and preserve the concept that Bonim Atem Lashem Aleikechem, and especially in our times when we're undergoing a very difficult challenge and a very difficult ordeal, and so to speak, we look at the world and it's you know coming apart at the seams. And sometimes we think to ourselves, what is going to be with us? Does Rebbein Shalom still love us? Where is the Ava of HaKadosh Baruch Hu? But in the end of days, you have to be so scared. Shema Yaharoig Achirim. It is so important for us. Always, never to forget about Rameyar. Don't ever lose focus from the great Tana Rameyar. That we have to wake up every single morning and review and integrate and focus on this great principle. Namely, that if you want to know, what does the Rebbe Hashem think about me? What does the Rebbe Hashem think about Klal Yisrael? Right now, the Rebbe Hashem is having such ahava to you, such powerful love, even greater than the love that you may have to your son. The Rebbe Hashem right now is emanating, engendering such deep, profound ahava to you. Rabbi Kivega writes, Where in the davening do we express our love for HaKadosh Baruch Hu? In the beginning of Shema, What do we say right before that? Baruch Atah Hashem, Haboicher Bi'amo Yisrael Bi'ahava. Says Rabbi Akiva Eger, there's no coincidence that right before we express our love for Hashem, we, dem- we declare... God's love for us. Because it's kemayim panim el panim. The more we recognize, the more we focus on, the more we feel, haboicher bi'amo Yisrael bi'ahava. And not just to Klal Yisrael collectively, to every single individual, the Chavetz Chaim writes, that the greatest love in this world is not a love of a father to a child, or a husband to a wife, or a child to a parent, the greatest love in this world is Adam La'atzmai, the, um, the love we have for ourselves. But says the Chavetz Chaim, even greater than the love we have for ourselves is HaKadosh Baruch Hu's love for us. And therefore, the Chida writes, and it's in the uh, opening of the Sefer, this is my favorite part. The Chida writes, Haloize HaDavar, it is well known. Kvar Noida, it is an established principle. Asher pinas yikras yisoid musad laadas yisrael mimetzayim yadhina. The cornerstone principle of the Jewish people. From the day God took us out of Egypt until today, heyois yisrael b'nei kelchai is the fact that the Klal Yisrael are the living children of Hashem. And just to conclude this time for real, who more than any other nation tried to destroy that feeling that we have, that we are children of Hashem. It is a nation that tried to obliterate the three mitzvahs that testify we are the children of Hashem. Chodesh, Mila, and Shabbos. The Chida writes, the fact that a Jew could keep Shabbos, how could you keep Shabbos? Shabbos is the scepter of the king. Someone who uses the scepter of the king is Marad Bamalchus, but we could use the scepter of the king. We could keep Shabbos because we are the children of Hashem. Mila, the Zoyar says, demonstrates we are the children of Hashem. Chodesh, the fact that Bezdin could be Mechadesh, the new, new moon, 
and it could be wrong decision, and God will go along with it. That demonstrates we are the children of Hashem. The Chida writes, and the Bnei Yisachar quotes in many places, the mitzvahs of Chodesh, Mila, and Shabbos demonstrate we are the children of Hashem. What does it mean we're the children of Hashem? We're a chilek eleika mimal. Our spiritual DNA, the same way when you have a, a son, when you have a child, the father gives over the, the DNA, the genetic code to the child. The genetic code, the spiritual genetic code of the neshama of a Jew is chilek eleika mimal. On our spiritual DNA, it is imprinted divinity, godliness. But the Yavanim said, Ein lachem chilek like, hey, Yisrael, you guys, you are not the children of Hashem. You're just like anybody else. No Chodesh, no Mila, no Shabbos. But in essence, Ein Lachem Chelek Belike Yisrael, the Shabbos, Shabbos Mabarchim Kislev. So when God made the miracle of Hanukkah, what light did he shine on the world? The light of V'yachar Kain Bo'u Banecha Ledver Beisecha. Ask the Bnei Yisachar, what's the emphasis? V'yachar Kain Bo'u Banecha. The answer is the Yivanim wanted us to feel we are Ein Lachem Chelek Belekei Yisrael. We are not the children of Hashem. So the light of Hanukkah, the miracle of Hanukkah, the Ur of Hanukkah is the Ur, the great light of Bonim Atem Lashem Lekeichem. And therefore, how, sir, how significant it is. Which Tana was always tapping into the light of Hanukkah and always praying, God, you bailed us out in the times of Hanukkah. You demonstrated for us that we are in fact your children in the times of Hanukkah. Bail us out today. Reb Meir was always busy with Hanukkah. Reb Meir, Elokah de Meir Anini. God, you showed us in the times of Hanukkah the Yivanim were wrong, that we could keep Chodesh, we could keep Shabbos, we keep, could keep Mila. We are in fact Chilek Elei Kamimal. V'yachakein bo'u banecha. That's why it was Reb Meir's Tefillah. Elaka de Meir Aneni. And, but we know, the Rabbi Mechai writes in the Kanakema, Hanukkah is the beginning of the light of the Geula Shlema. It's the Chinuch of the third Beis HaMikdash. And therefore Reb Meir who says about himself, he is the Mashiach, because it is in his merit that Mashiach will come. He would always be Mespalel. Elaka de Meir, the God who began to bring the light of Bonim Atem Lashem Lekechem in the miracle of Hanukkah, and you began to show us the glory of the redemption. Aneni, please shine that light as brightly as you possibly can and show the world and show Klal Yisrael how deeply you love us, how powerful your love is to us, that we are bein kach u bein kach. It doesn't matter 2021. It doesn't matter how acute the pandemic is. Every morning we have to wake up and feel the intense burning love of HaKadosh Baruch Hu to Klal Yisrael and to each and every one of us. And Be'ezus Hashem, we are mispalel, elaka, the mayor Aneni, the Yibbana Sham, should in fact shine this light so brightly on the Jewish people, and we should be Zoicha to the great day of the coming of the redemption. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity, and uh, just to join together with you with this morning it was such a great Ni'imos, and uh, such an Achas Ruach, and Bracha Vahatzlacha, Kol Tov Sala. Shkayach. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, our tefillahs will be answered and the Mashiach will come and we'll be, all be in the same time zone, right? <laughs> uh, I'm like, same, so, not same time, not same time, but all together. Um, Shkayach Moreno, Rabbeinu, Rabbeinu, thank you for the share. I think if anyone has a question, it's a rather different time. Well, otherwise, thank you everyone for joining and thank you, Rabbi Glassin, for giving the share. Shkayach, everyone for coming, especially to the Chashiv Rabbanim. And uh, thank you again, Lior and Evan and Gary for uh, hosting and sponsoring the show. Shkayach. Shkayach, You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.